So the reason I say that is at each of these pinch points, they gather and get smaller, and then in the middle of them, they get bigger. And so if I come in here like this, um, let's, let's just start by making kind of a black square. Um, and then it's basically just rounded diamonds. Okay, so <coughs> get rid of our stroke. And then I'm going to go to Object Pattern Make. Object Pattern Make brings me into this. And I'm not going to worry about the grids right now. But what I am going to do is I'm going to change this from a square to a diamond. So let's just delete it. And then we'll just create a square. And then we will rotate that square. OK, so that's like that. And then. Now we need to see which one of these is going to give us the right grid. I mean, it's probably brick by column. I don't think it's going to be. It could be hex. So it's, actually, that looks pretty good. Hex by row is our winner. And the way I do that is I just guess. I just like go through until I'm like, that's the one I want, because I can never remember. This little deal up here is their tile tool. It's going to edit the tile. So this is a lot, let me change this. Um, this is a lot like Mario Brothers, right? And so when it exits one side, let me dim. All the gray ones are like not real. When the black thing exits the right, it comes back on the left. When it exits the bottom, it comes back on the top. That's how that works. And so if we go <clears throat> hex by column, now we just need to tighten up this tile so that it has a little bit of a gap, but not too much of a gap. Just enough. And that might be a little bit too much in the bottom, so we'll just kind of spread that out just a touch. And still, there we go. Okay. Now, the other thing that I saw was um, I saw that these were rounded. And so I'm just going to get A with everything selected. I'm just going to round off the corners a little bit, like that. So now we have our kind of rounded diamond. OK, and from what I remember, the back was dark, and these were not. And so I'm going to take this, and we can change this later. But I'm just going to make it a little bit lighter, something like that. OK, once we do that, then we click Done. When you click Done, what it actually does is it saves that to your swatch panel. So now we have this guy in our swatch panel. Okay. okay, so if we take this black shape, okay, and then we take a copy of it, put it on top, and apply to that fill this swatch. So it gives us that, right? But it's too big. And so we could go back in, if you double click on this, then it'll, it'll bring you back into this and you can edit it. Or, which I find easier, I can click on this and click my, my scale tool, which looks like that. If you double click on the scale tool, it brings up this menu. If you unclick transform objects, then everything else will scale except the outside of the object. And so I can come in here and I can make that, we'll preview it, and I can shrink this down. Okay. So I keep shrinking, 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 shrinking until it's about the size that I want. <clears throat> and I click OK. <coughs> so now we're going to put this up here like this. Now the trick is it's going to pucker, kind of. It kind of gathers at points. So now what we need to do is we need to go to Object, Envelope, Distort, Envelope, Options. So before we make an envelope, we need to make sure that it is going to distort pattern fills. Mm -hmm. And if that's checked, then we're good. Then I can come in and I can go Object, Envelope, Distort, Make with Mesh. OK. And Make with Mesh is going to add these little columns and rows. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so we probably don't need too many columns. So I'm just going to turn that down to like two. And you can see that like as I do that, the lines like show up and disappear. So I'm going to turn it down to two. 
rows though, let's say we need more of those and click OK. And now when we grab this, this, and this and pull it down, you'll see that we can warp the pattern. Right, and so from there it's just how much you warp it and whatnot, but you can see that you can get it to kind of warp. Now, I'm also seeing that since these are round, they have a little bit of a highlight. And so if I go back and I double click, I can add that highlight without doing any much more work. I can just come in here like this, and I can just add like a little, little circle We'll make it this color and then we'll just brighten it up just a touch like that. And that will become part of the pattern and you don't have to like re-warp anything. So that envelope that you've warped it, then when you click done, now it has that little highlight. And that highlight brings out quite a bit. Yeah. That, that's really going to start giving it a ton of depth. Now on top of this, you can start to add things like this. We can come in and we can say, let's go like this and let's make it a gradient and we'll go black to black. Get rid of these two by dragging them off. And then we'll come over here, take this down to zero and then turn it. Now you can see that you have control over like kind of making it look like it's giving curving around or whatever. You can also do this. So if I take this and I drag it here, where it gathers a little bit, I can come in like this. Let's get my gradient annotator out. And I'm going to drag here and then I'm going to add another one right there. And that one is going to go to 0% opacity. And I can come in and I can start to kind of add these little shadows. We can have that kind of spread out a little bit. And then we can just turn this down so it's not so crazy. Maybe a little bit more. A little bit more. There we go. And so you just kind of you're just kind of massaging you know the colors, but you can kind of move these oops, sorry. Uh, with a black arrow tool, we can kind of just move these wherever we want. And so you can see that if this outside had this ripply edge, mm -hmm. you know, then which which is easy to do. So then we can just take what you've already got here, <clears throat> put that over the top. Um, let's actually do it this way instead. Let's copy that and then we'll paste it over here. Good. So now it's on that same layer. We'll grab it like this, and then if everything fit, which it doesn't, mm -hmm. um, then you can just grab this whole thing. And command seven. Yeah, and so that that used this shape as a mask. Mm -hmm. And so now all you have to do is just come in and say, okay, so I'm going to double click to get into isolation mode. I'm going to click and drag to get me this guy, and I'm going to give myself some some shadows on the corners. You got a lot going on, so it might be time to start locking things. So I'm just pressing command two to lock them. They're in my way. Okay. Trying to get to that one. There we go. So I'll go up, down like this, kind of pull that over a little bit. Then I can flip around, copy. And so you can see how you just really start to just draw out that pattern. Now we've exaggerated more than is in this image, mm -hmm. but it, it even looks a little bit better, I think. Yeah. And so it's all just, it's all just. You know, kind of massaging it. And so where it's coming towards us, the pattern's going to get bigger. And when it goes further away from us, it's going to get smaller. And then further away from us is going to have a shadow. Towards us is going to have some light. And so you kind of just, just massage it that way.